Tuning in, we're talking with Troy Hurd, and right now we're talking about Hamlet. He's directing that production over at the Onyx Theater. It's going to be presented September 7th through the 23rd. But the cool thing about it is tickets are available right now, and you can get them online at onyxtheater.com. Um, and, and you know something? Uh, here's the thing. I don't care if you're a traditionalist or you're the the fluffy musical type. you got to see Hamlet. Hamlet is... is I mean, it's the tried and true test. They say it's the great. Some say it's the greatest play ever written. Uh, would you Would you agree? It's one of them. It's it's up, it's, there, with, it's up there with Oedipus Rex in terms of structure and. Play you right put Oedipus Rex up there. I don't, I'd say it's a good play, but I don't know. If it's playwright one and one. Uh, it's Go true. back to it. I think this is the perfect Hamlet for me to see because I haven't seen any other ones. I'm not a huge Shakespeare fan, but and that's here the we audience go. I want. I mean, yeah, I. I it, I'm not setting out to piss off the purists, mm -hmm. but if I can make converts off of this show, mm -hmm. I would love that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the biggest the biggest um, no-no is for it to be boring. Mm -hmm. If it's boring, then we've lost you. And I remember, I, I honestly hated Shakespeare for years yeah. and years. You did? Hated it. Okay. Until grad school. I feel so bad now. Well, I was, in, I was in grad school at SCAD, and I assistant directed Romeo and Juliet. The director was a, um, a member of the Old Globe, and that's when she taught me, okay. look, you're a director, and you, you look at you look at interpretation, look at the script. This is poetry, but it's not poetry. It's also stage directions. It tells you where are they moving. It tells you what are they feeling. Everything is right there, and oh, it's like a puzzle. You know, and that's when I started having fun cutting it and moving it around and seeing how it worked. Mm -hmm. And I went and ran a Shakespeare company for three years after that. You'd be you'd be you'd be surprised, even the contemporary um, plays. If you if you analyze the <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to get into a lesson that I'm going to teach my kids <laughs> later. But like, if you if you think if you think about it, take take every day. Take we go through a drive through and we we just get a hamburger and fries and we're eating it on the way home and we're doing it's because it's part of our day and we're not thinking about. It. But if you sit down and you eat it and you think about you know taking that bite and you put the burger back down and you're doing nothing else and you're just sitting there thinking about it, you chew it thirty times because you got to chew it good in order for it to digest good and you're and you're letting all the flavors hit your tongue because that's what it is eating is an event you eat if you dissect every little thing that you do you can get to the root of what you're needing to accomplish you know what I mean well, I, I just learned something yeah and so it's kind of like if you do that with a play now it's homework, it's a lot of homework, but if you sit down and you're looking at the line and what the character's intention is with that line and what they're trying to accomplish and what they're hopefully going to accomplish here that's gonna lead them to here, you can dissect the reason why they say what they say, not just how they say it. You can say, hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? You, know, you can say it a million different ways, but why you say just those words. I mean, we're as human beings, we're very careful with our with how we say things, you know. Mm -hmm. But um but that's, what? you just said directing one oh one. That's the rule number one is why. Yeah. Why? You always yeah. ask why every line, every oh I want to do much ado about nothing on Mars. Why? Yeah. You can do it, just you, justify it. Just have a good strong answer to why. And here we got we're coming full circle to back to Joseph. You can you can do any concept you want with anything you want, so long as there's a good mm -hmm. why. So long as there's a good reason behind it, mm -hmm. and and um, not everyone's gonna like you. That's the other biggest pitfall that any director can miss. You know, trying to please everybody, you can't do that. Yeah. You know, you gotta you gotta go in there with a concept and a plan, and and, a, and the goal, the number one goal, is to tell a good story. Mm -hmm. yes. And in you know, doesn't mean that everyone's gonna like the story. Mm -hmm. and, and that's everyone's goal. That's the director's goal. That's the all the yeah. actors' goal as well. And. Troy, you were talking about you know viewing things from a director's point of view. It's like from the outside looking in, and then talking about how the actors are kind of from the inside looking out and knowing their characters. Eric, I'm curious because you do both. Hmm. So when you're a director, are you just directing, or are you trying to relate to what your cast is going through? And when you're a, or when you're performing, do you have to step back and like, okay, okay, that's just the that's what the director's job is. I'm not going to touch that. Well, um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Just and this is just me personally. Yeah. I, I don't think my mind's typical of everything. Um, as a director, I, I can easily, more easily kind of see how, relate to the characters and try to help guide them. Because you don't want to tell, even in high school, this is the big, this is the big thing. Giving, you know, blocking notes and say, stand here, then move here on this line. This line. That's, sometimes you have to do that in, in, in a high school setting mm -hmm. um, to help move the timeline along because you, you know, you, you gotta do what you gotta do. 
But for the most part, you you hope that the actors come to those conclusions and, and solutions themselves so that they can naturally make those choices themselves with their characters. And, and as a director, it's easier for me to kind of put myself in their heads to see where the actor is in relation to the character and, and vice versa. Okay. Now, as a as a actor, it's very, very hard from now that I've been directing for a while, it's very hard for me to get out of directing mode. I bet. It's very hard. Like to sit and watch a show, I have to tell myself, enjoy this listen to what they're saying, watch what they're doing. I have to constantly remind myself to just relax. And then it's <laughs> funny because like I get so wrapped up in the technical and the, uh, the the brouhaha of the production elements and the in the in the what they could be doing and what I foresee them possibly doing, that I I find myself straightening my back and sitting at the edge of my seat and stuff, or like gripping the, the handle and, and I have to tell myself, relax, just just listen to what yeah. they're saying and enjoy the story. <laughs> and and um, when I'm in the show, um, for one, I this is an, and uh, this is a compliment to the directors that I've worked with. I, I really don't want to do the show unless I can trust the director. Because I have to. <laughs> because it's hard for me to remove myself mm -hmm. from that. It, it's, it's part of my process. It's a challenge to remove myself. Mm -hmm. Because I constantly find myself wanting to say something, but that would be overstepping my bounds. Or wanting to try something, but I think that would be overstepping. I don't know. And oh, now I'm in this struggle. Should I? Shouldn't I? I don't want to be... You know, and you, nobody wants to be pompous or arrogant or, or, you know, and so you're just, and then I find myself completely removed to what I should be doing, which is focusing on the character's choices. Right. Yes. And it's like, ah! Oh. You have so much more information in your head. Yeah, so it's, I would say the technical aspect of acting on stage is very, very, very hard for me. The creative aspect is fun. That's fun. It's mm -hmm. like choosing what colors to paint with. Yay! Burnt umber. You know, or whatever. <laughs> but, but the technical element of actually putting the brush to the canvas of acting is is hard for me because I want to um, I want to supply the demand of the director, mm -hmm. I want to fulfill the demands of the story, but I also really truly want to do it in relation to my fellow actors so well that it just seems seamless. And how do you do that when you have such a technical view of things? It's very very hard. So I would say that it's been a challenge. Even Joseph, something is is perceived as cotton candy fluffy as Joseph. It was extraordinarily out of my comfort zone. Very, very out of my comfort zone. And, and uh, it's, you know, I, I hope it was well received. And so that's all you can hope for. Right. Well, that's why I have a lot of respect for performers and actors. Like Katie's in the show, and we go home and talk about her performance, and she gets, she elicits notes from me. I mean, I won't give it to her, but I tell her I have a lot of respect for you. I sit down, and I'm watching the show, and I'm watching it as a whole, but then I sit and try to put myself in your mind. Like, what are you thinking about when you're doing this and, mm -hmm. you know, saying these lines and, you know, you, as a director you tend sometimes to lose that because that's their job. Their right. job, you know, is their each individual role. Mm -hmm. But when you think about, oh my God, the pressure they go through of mm -hmm. having to go up there and why are you doing what I told you to do, you know, it's sort of a neurotic moment I have. That's, so, I can imagine. Just to have the risk, I mean, I have a ton of respect for performers. Well, and especially in a, may I, may I throw another curveball at you, and, and this is stuff, I love doing shows with people that I'm friends with or I've worked with before because it's, it gives you a camaraderie before you even set foot on stage. Mm -hmm. But it's also tricky because, you know, trying to remove yourself so that you can approach the piece, it's hard because you want to, like, there are moments when I'll look dead right in the eye of one of my friends on stage and, and that's, that's yet another thing you have to, you have to overcome. You have yes. To, it's, it's interesting. It's very cool. I'm experiencing that right now with hair rehearsals because mm -hmm. Christian Escobar and David Tarr are in the cast as well. And we are buddies. Yeah. And so we come in with this camaraderie, we come in with this comfort level, but then I have to do what with who? What? We're going to do <laughs> what? I have to take off what? <laughs> so, it, th yeah, it is a little tough. That's interesting. <laughs> do you, now, intern Kelly's over here. She's filming. Now, just from a... Do you have your head? Is there a mic? Right no, I know, from a... Throw it on real quick. It's okay. I was just going to say, on, from a high school perspective, I mean, you, you're in sitting, you know, shoulder to shoulder with these people in math class. I mean, is it tricky for you to kind of remove yourself, or is it just kind of par for the course? Um, yeah, I would say it's difficult to an extent. I mean, um, especially at our school, because 
it's a small private school, so yeah. obviously everybody in the drama department knows everybody. Mm -hmm. And I've known a lot of them since sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have known each other since elementary school. So, yeah, I would say it's, it's difficult sometimes. Ah, the perils of putting on a show. Yes. Jeez Louise. <laughs> oh, well. well, let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to um, wrap things up with Troy Hurd here, and then we're going to be bringing in um, Ragtag Entertainment. We're going to talk a little bit about Susical and hair. Yeah. So if you're just now joining us, this is Curtain Call with Eric Ball. Hang tight, and we'll be right back. No. 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 And that's, you know, the, the thing with directing and writing this is I don't treat the writing as precious. And, you know, I guess I'm not a yeller in rehearsals either. You know, whatever. And it's just like, hey, can you do this? And Katie's such a giving performer. Is that? I said Katie. Katie's such a giving performer. She'll bend over backwards because she can. She's very flexible. Well, can I tell you something about her? I didn't really get a chance to perform with her in Crazy Freak Out or to start another CD, so I'll give you a thumbs up. On Sounds good, man. Um, but the one second that I sh shared with her on stage at the bar, and then the second, you know, it's like, she's 100% in character. Like, like, 100%. Like, uh, there's, I can't say that about everybody. Everybody's kind of, you know, messing with people. And, yeah, and so. yeah. Because you get into the routine of it. And the yeah. Well, I, I specifically watched Katie because I decided at the beginning of the show, oh, I would play her. I want to be her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I definitely Back saw. to what you were saying, you know, the casting. Casting kinda, myself, yeah. Actually, but, not a bad idea. <laughs> I think that's part of her discipline, though, of having the come out of Jubilee for two, three years and doing the same show twice a night, doing like six nights a week. Yeah. yeah. She knows the, the routine. The focus, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, yeah. I love routine, though. That's why I love shows. Especially if they have at least a three-week you know, because you can stay in the routine. I go to the gas station, get my two Gatorades. Yeah. I go and I get there, I have half a hot dog. I know, it's weird, but I do. Do you have strict routines that you follow like that? Are you OCD? I'm, my mother is very OCD, and my dad's very ADD. <laughs> so it's like they're constantly at war and no one's ever winning. <laughs> you know? It's like, like, like I... And it's not even superstition. So he's getting everything out and she's putting everything away. Yeah. Like, I don't believe in, like, hocus pocus. Like, oh, that's bad luck. I don't... Are you kidding me? Who cares? I really don't believe in that. But the first opening night of Joseph... Um, opening night of Joseph, they were cool. Um, I was at the bottom of the stairs when the, the piano started playing the overture. Mm -hmm. And then... As soon as it got to da 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 I was making my way upstairs. So the next night, I was down there and I didn't want to go up the stairs until that moment. Isn't that weird? It's like, I don't, it's not superstitious. It's just routine. Yeah, the comfort of routine. It feels right when I do it that way. I can gauge my personal tempo. Based and, on but that. you mean to, see as soon as I recognize that I'm following a pattern, I have to break it. Yeah. That's how I am. I don't find huh. comfort in the routine. I find like, oh my gosh, I'm redundant. Ugh. But it's all technical. Now, creatively on stage, I love to take chances. Ask anybody here. I will throw it out there. But and I, I love. That's why I love *Determined of Kings* so much. Is because um, it was half theater and half um, WWE wrestling. Because <laughs> every night the crowd was different. It's like you, you gauge what you do based on your relationship with the crowd. Some nights it was dead, and you had to drag it out of So, a question about that, the jousting? Yeah. There's no pre-assigned winner in there, is there? There's one, two, three... Giving secrets away. Uh-oh. There's three... I don't think it's a secret. Whatever. Sue me. Um, there's... <laughs> don't, please. I have nothing. Um, <laughs> Speaking of routine. Speaking of routine. Um, there's three elements of it that are um, not... Determine like the throwing of the javelin. Yeah, there's no way you can determine that. So whoever wins that wins that. Right. Um, I thought the other ones were just kind of. Yeah. Hmm. The ones where they take the sword and they chop the fake heads off. Uh -huh. That's another one. Okay. Um, and the racing when they race down. Okay. And they they really do race and they have fun. And sometimes it's so close that when I deemed this one the winner, the other guy would be like, are you freaking, like, he would look at me and go, are you kidding me? And like backstage, they would be like, are you kidding me? I was like, hey, it was close. And he goes, are you kidding me? And I was like, they would take it seriously. And I was like, dang. We'll do one more and then we'll go back and then we'll 
I kind of wrap long things long up. You have to get out of here right at seven. Yeah. Pretty cool. Okay, I'll say, are we? Do we have people back? Here? Yeah. I yeah, think and, so. I, and I think Ava's here too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why don't you bring them in, and we'll say farewell, and we'll kind of transition as we go. And then we'll I really appreciate you coming in short notice, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's it's Eric Ball time to you now. I don't get Eric Ball time quite enough. Yeah, we need to hang out more. We really do. We'll see. Now that we're starting school, I'll be in a routine again, so we can just find those little gaps and go you know, from there. I'm still hoping that we can do a show together sometime down the road here. And you, t you totally. They're doing another uh, production on Broadway of Glenn Berry, Glenn Ross, and just, ever since you said that, I've been just like. Mm -hmm. I do too. Oh. All is the Ginger Coalition. <laughs> Yay! Come on in, guys. Hey, stranger. We want to bring that black chair in, too. Yes. Hi. 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 All right, and what we'll do is after we say bid you farewell, we'll swing this over and you guys can swing this back and forth. Actually, one of you can put this uh, headset on if you want. Okay, here we go. Thanks for listening to this Curtain Call. This is Eric Ball, and we're back talking with Troy Hurd. We're going to have to bid Troy farewell here. He's got to uh, take off. He's got obligations tonight uh, over at the Onyx Theater. We have Summer Camp, the musical, um, and we were talking about that and his upcoming production of Hamlet. That's going to happen September 7th through the 23rd. Mm -hmm. Both shows are over at the Onyx Theater. You can get tickets at onyxtheater.com. And uh, while you're listening, you might as well go over to the App Store on your iPhone and uh, download your free KSHP app. That way you can listen to Curtain Call and all the other KSHP shows live on your phone. Uh, it's so clear. Crystal clear. It really is. And you know, it's funny because a lot of people don't have AM radios just hanging out. I in their know. house, <laughs> it's like let's just let's just you know get the hamster out and put him in the wheel, and we'll get that AM radio going again. No offense to KSHP. Okay, now um, anyway, so summer camp. Um, what if you wanted to say one last thing to our viewers or listeners? I always say viewers. I've said that fifty times. <laughs> it's it's because we're on YouTube. Yeah. I'm talking to you, viewers. Um, if you want to say one last thing to our listeners about summer camp, what 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 could you say to kind of if they're on the fence, get them out the door and get them, get them out there to see the show. Air conditioned theater. You know what? <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. And high hysterical. And high hysterical air conditioned. That's what that should go on a poster. Absolutely. Well, it used to be on the movie posters. In uh, what the fifties? Air conditioning. <laughs> That's how they got you. Yeah. She's like, don't sit around at grandma's. Come out and be cool. Uh, okay, well, anyways, thank you, Troy. I really Thanks appreciate you stopping by. And, and good luck to the cast of Summer Camp and the uh, cast of Hamlet that's coming up. And uh, now we have also in the uh, studio, and, and I'm going to very unceremoniously say, now get out. Now get out. <laughs> ben Lowy and Andrew Wright, how are you guys? How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Now the Troy's gone. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm, so, oh, I'm sorry. He's still in the doorway. Wow. Oh, yeah. We are, uh, now we're talking, we're going to swap things over and, and talk a little bit of ragtag entertainment because we got two shows that we want to talk about. One, and I think it's appropriate that we're talking about both Susical <laughs> and Hair. Yeah, they yeah. really lend well, to each yeah. other. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I'm talking about back to school, the things you can think, and you got to get your hair cut. We're actually doing a mashup. We are, we're I, doing a mashup. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> plans for a month later, we're mashing. <laughs> well, and what's funny is that you're also in a show Right now, November, yes. over yes. at Las Vegas yeah, Little The Theater. show is November. It's not, I'm, I, I have a theater time machine. Yeah. It's, it's not in November. Right. the show yeah. is November. Yeah, that, that, now if I'm not mistaken, that's the one that Nathan Lane did on Broadway, it right? Is. Okay. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fan Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's start things off right, and let's get goofy, and let's talk Susical. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> Susical the Musical, if you haven't seen this um, stage adaption of the Dr. Seuss books, kind of all wrapped up in one giant conglomerate, <laughs> and you need to go see it. It's one of those shows that every time I say it, everybody always thinks high school productions right away, because it's often done in high schools. Oh, yeah. But when I directed it, let me tell you, I found this kind of weird kinship to the show. I love the show. It's got a... It's got a, um, a heart 
oh, to it that is very, very endearing and appropriate for audiences of all ages, of course. All ages. Um, but not just, just the, love it. not just because it's Dr. Seuss either. It, it's, it's got like a, a message and a kind of a pulse that would appeal uh, the traditional and the conservative and the wacky fringe theater goer. I, I would think it's it's pretty much for everybody. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. One one thing that that I, I try to stress now, especially in this production, is that Susicle the musical is not a kids show. Right. It's not an adult show. It's a family show. Awesome. And and that's definitely one way where where, where I'm trying to take this is that um, what it does is it, it it creates a tangible, realistic thing for the kids' imagination on stage. It's their imagination tangible. Nice. And it allows their, their parents or their family to enjoy that with them, to step in that and to be a kid again. And then they can all experience that together. Yeah. And, and that's the power of this show. Well, and if you talk about theater as being a means by which to escape reality, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? If you think about it, you know, we, we've talked about this in the past with all these other shows, you know, how you know, it, it's very good, even if you've never seen it, to get out there and try to treat yourself to a little bit of just chill out and, mm -hmm. and kind of relax and, mm -hmm. and escape your, your crazy drive-through, gotta have my latte by 7.30 so I can get to work by 7.45, <laughs> reality, you know what I mean? Um, and, and so, and this is a great show because who hasn't grown up with a Dr. Seuss book? At least... Dr. Seuss. I mean, Dr. Seuss probably did. <laughs> he, did. Huh? he hated it, so he had to write them down. Right. He grew up with those books that smell like grandma's fruit cellar, you know? It's like, and he's like, I gotta do something about this. Nicholas Nickleby. Uh, oh, get this out of my face. David Copperfield. We'll yeah. never get through that time. <laughs> but, uh, but everybody knows these stories, and what's fun about this particular stage adaptation is that they, um, they kind of mash them all together. Mm -hmm and kind of help the audience identify um, with them through a character um, on stage as well. So let me ask you now, Ben, uh, if you're just not tuning in, we're talking with Ben Lowy with uh, Ragtag, and he's doing uh, Susical the Musical, which opens, and help me out here, I, I didn't get a chance to pull it up. It opens September 21st and runs through September 30th. Excellent. And where's the, where is it going to be at? At the Henderson Pavilion. Excellent. Henderson Pavilion. Um, you need to go out and see this. This is a talk about a back-to-school family opportunity. Everybody gets back into the routines when the school year begins. And to get back to a routine doesn't necessarily mean to sacrifice those family um, opportunities. You, know? mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to still find time to have a meal around the table. You need to still find, find time to, to uh, talk and, and get out and do things as a family. And this yeah. is a perfect opportunity for that. So um, anyway, so now that you have uh, mounted this show and you have a cast, what what are you looking forward to doing with this p particular piece? Knowing that you're 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 quite the artiste yourself. Oh well, thank you. Well, yeah. I, I don't know about that, but the the, the issue with the, the trouble with Seuss, well, the trouble with a lot of shows these days, uh -huh. um, especially with something as iconic as Seuss, is you can't stray too far from what people know. Right. Um, we were just or they're gonna. About we were just talking about yeah. that. Oh oh with. With Troy, with Hamlet, and oh, how we have yeah. uh, yeah. directors hat, feet, feet, you know, some more than others feel an obligation to tipping their hat to what is originally perceived as the norm. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, so. well, us, yeah, and Hamlet is definitely one that yeah. you know is got its market. But a lot of people they'll they'll go really far with that and, and stretch it out. The issue with with Sue's stuff is that visually, people know it visually, right? You know, and that's really so key to it. So it's hard mm -hmm. to to bend the rules a little bit. You know, you, you want to try and reinterpret it, but also try and give it a, a lot of that same flavor that people are used to. Mm -hmm. so, so you know, one of the interesting things in Sue's school, especially in the script, you know, right off the top, the the, the playwrights say, okay, well. These, you have to keep these people human. I mean, they're, they're characters, they're animals, but, but try to keep the humanity in them. And that's definitely somewhere we're going with this. I don't want Horton the Elephant to be an elephant. I don't want him to read elephant. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're doing it. He's a, he's a mechanic. He's got, he's got full coveralls. He's got a, a, one of those muff hats that folds up. Something that reads, yeah. mm -hmm. something that reads elephant. You know, oh, because wow. it's all seen through JoJo's imagination. JoJo's the, the lead boy who's the story, who the story is, was about. Mm -hmm. And so it's all seen through his imagination. So how he interprets real people in the real world to be. So that's what we're so going So it's like for. how JoJo would cast these Seuss characters. Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. And if you want to tell, you know, as far as, as, far as uh, that, that's kind of how we go about our days, if you think about it. I mean, kids especially. Kids especially will, you know, can identify with this. But adults, too. I mean, who hasn't had a boss that has been a pain in their butt, uh -huh. and then they perceive this boss as the shark or the, you know, having 
a lawnmower like personality, you know, or something. You know, you perceive them a certain way. I mean, it's it's breaking it down in, in its purest form and, and offering it up in an exaggerated manner called theater. I mean, it's basically what it is, and and doing it all to the tune of stories that we all know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that there you go, Susical. You don't even have to go now. I just gave you the plot. There it is. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, but you'll want to see all the endearing characters. Sour kangaroo. Sour kangaroo. One of my favorites. Cat in a hat. Yeah. <laughs> Lysander Abadie is cat in a hat. He is. Yeah. Oh yeah. my. He's I, perfect. I Perfect will say, go see. Uh, Lysander did Snoopy for us in Your Good Man Charlie Brown a couple summers ago, and in these, he's fantastic in dramatic roles. But when he gets to let loose with his energy, like he's such a high energy performer, like he's I can't cannot wait to see him in this. His rewatch value, like I, I'll go more than once to see. I Lysander. love that term, rewatch value. I'm I'm stealing that. That is awesome. Mm. No, but he's he's extraordinarily. He's a character too because I saw him in King and I and I didn't even recognize him. Yeah, I was just like, it's the same guy. It was crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, and you got a great cast. We got Amazing Maisie. We got we got the Wickersham brothers, the Crazy Monkeys, mm -hmm. and I can see why a lot of high schools do the show. Um, when I decided to do the show at Faith, it was it was um, strictly because I wanted to do some something that was. Uh, I'm going to be careful with how I say this, but it's true. Marketable. Marketable mm -hmm. not necessarily for the audience, but also for the students. We had a brand new theater building that year. Um, a lot of unknowns, a lot of questionable, what should I do? And a whole lot of expectation, yeah. you know, from the administration and the community combined. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to do something that was going to deliver on all accounts as far as um, marketability. Mm -hmm. And these are characters that a lot of people know and love. And um, a cat in a hat without a striped hat is going to be hard to do. So at least um, tipping the striped hat to that is something that's doable. But kind of shaping the world and how the story pans out and how um, you know cast members and audiences alike can approach this in their own flavor um, is something that I found extraordinarily appealing. Mm -hmm. um, it was like a giant wad of silly putty. Doesn't matter what you do with it, it's still silly putty. But you know what shape am I going to shape it in? Right. Um, and, and I thought. I don't know about you and what your experience is with, uh, with your cast right now, but my cast, they at first uh, thought it was silly. And then after about a week, they were embodying these characters. They <laughs> wanted to go places with our sour kangaroo wound up becoming a Tyra Banks, America's Next Top Model type. And, and it, was, it just went places. And I, I was so willing to give them rope. I was like, just go, go. I don't know if it'll sell, but let's give it a go. You so... Uh, are you what type? What lengths are you going with your uh, with your cast? Are are they much a part of this? Uh... Absolutely, absolutely. Well, first of all, it was the casting process was a little unorthodox in the way that that I pushed these auditioners to you yeah. know further than I'm sure many of them have gone. <laughs> I mean, I, I I had them get down and dirty and do some physical stuff. I, I needed to know that they could commit to goofiness, to cool. goofy characters, and let go of those inhibitions. Nice. That's one thing I tell them every rehearsal. Look, do make a choice. Stick to it. Don't you know? You will not be judged if it's if it's if everything is right. But if it's not quite there, I'll let you know. So that's I'm pushing them as far as they can go. And one thing that I've told I have a massive ensemble. And one thing I've told them is, look, ensemble is integral to this show. You will be doing more dances. You will be singing more songs. You will be make, having more <laughs> more costume changes than anyone in this yeah. show. You will be on stage more than the Cat in the Hat, more than Horton, yes. more than Horton, more than everyone. You are important, and I need you to commit. And I, I did not cast anyone who wasn't there. Well, and if you think about it, you open a book to Dr. Seuss. I mean, there there is a character telling a story or a situation, green eggs and ham, blah, it's right there. Mm -hmm. You know, but the how they kind of paint the portrait. I mean, even just the books of the the pages of the books, you open it up and it's this surreal world that kind of landscapes the storytelling. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that surreal world, and that's kind of why I like the show, is that I think it's done pretty well. There's only one or two moments in the show that I'm kind of like, where are they going with this? And I had to like really think about it. The rest is pretty well done, where they kind of set the stage for you. It's kind of like this, and, and, the, un, and the integral part, of course, is the ensemble, so mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm very uh, eagerly anticipating, especially knowing who's in it, how they're going to kind of flesh out these characters. And, and uh, any challenges thus far? Any? Uh... Um, so far, no. Uh, you know, we've been focusing for the, the so far mostly on the music because, you know, you don't expect it with Seuss, but the, <laughs> the, the music is hard. 
It is I mean, hard. The, I know that. The, I did the show in 05, and this music is hard. The the uh, the harmonies are ridiculous mm -hmm. for the ensemble, and, and the ry rhythmically, it's it's so tough. It's so tough. So we've been focusing a lot on the music, and but fortunately, we have some fantastic musicians, both both mm -hmm. in the cast and mm -hmm. and also you know our music director Alana Gallo. She's fantastic, and she 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 guides them with such precision, and everything's cool. going really well. Um, to the point where I walk into rehearsal because I, I miss rehearsal for a week or something because I'm doing three other shows or whatever, and I walk in and it's it's done. You know, it sounds amazing, and, and, and you know, and we're making huge strides with that. That's great, and, and the you know the other um, end of the stick is that is that it's kind of like a it's kind of like a fun house, and it's like oh, yeah. in order to build a, a perfectly executed fun house for others to to mm. go through and enjoy, there's a huge technical demand too. You know, you got to make oh, sure that yes. that these. It's it's hard because you think high school theater, you automatically think line and people peeking through curtains and waving at parents. Mm -hmm. um, there's also kind of like a, if you're not performing animals, you're not you know if you're performing animals, you're not doing real theater because how can you perform a deer that walks around on the time legs or whatever? You know, it's kind of like there's a weird fantasy element that you have to kind of remain very loyal to in order to sell. It's funny that you said that about the deer walking out of time lanes because that is one thing that I, that I told uh, our choreographer, Michael Curry, is that, listen, you have this choreography built for the ensemble and I love it. However, keep in mind that I want all of my characters, all of my actors, to dance as their, as their creature, to nice. dance as their character. Mm -hmm. if, if they're a bear, they need to, you know, if, if the body bear, hair, yeah. exactly, in how they move. So keep that in mind. That's cool. So I mean, I you know, I I, I don't want and I don't want any scenes. You know, mm -hmm. I, I want it to be clear who these people are. You to down to those to the to the little who's that have no name. <laughs> well, and can I? And this is kind of like, and I think I've said this in class. You're gonna nod maybe, but um, this that's something that I always tell um, when I'm directing a show, my actors to do in auditions even, is try to envision the character as an animal. What animal you perceive this character to be, mm -hmm. and then and then deliver it like it, that animal would or something. I always love doing that because I, for me especially, I start with it visually. What I hope it looks like or what I think it should look like. And animals are something we all identify with. And so it's like when we see a kitty cat, I don't know about you, but my cat always jumps on the table, comes up and wants me to scream, rubs herself on my arm, and then puts her butt in my face. Every time. I don't understand that. I don't get it. It's like, does she like me? Or does she not like me? I'm good. Is that good? Is that animal talk for good? Because I'm not sure. So it's kind of like animals have a certain demeanor about them, um, and and it's like easy to identify to that because, you know, it's something that we're detached from that we're kind of like observing. So you know, I wonder, uh, are you gonna are you challenging them by asking them to like watch YouTube videos on kangaroos and stuff like that? Or, or is there any sort of like exercises or games that you play before? And we do a lot of exercises, yeah, uh, especially at the beginning stages of the rehearsal process. But I didn't want them to define themselves by this world. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted them to have a natural fluidity to their movements, but I wanted them to create, create fa fantastical characters mm -hmm. around real characters. So cool. use what they already know. I didn't ask them to do research on on koalas or, or you know, <laughs> thing they yeah, wanted to. Blowfish. <laughs> yeah, blowfish. Blowfish. You know, but I asked them to think of something and then and then exaggerate it and build upon cool. it and give me something and you know and that's that's where they're going and, and I am shocked at how committed they are to these characters because I'm not sure that I would. Be. <laughs> that is you awesome. Know, you know. So. Well, if you're just now tuning in, we're talking with Ben Lowy and Andrew Wright from Ragtag Entertainment. We're talking about Susical the musical. And, um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to be the first to say that this is a show that's often done by high school theaters and stuff, but this is a, a community theater production that's going to be done in a very unique way, and it's a perfect opportunity for you to get your family or friends or whatever and get out and have a great evening of enter uh, entertainment. It's, it's, it's funny. It's, it's wild and crazy and wacky. It's very, there's sensitive moments that are very touching, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's a great show. And I happen to know a great deal of the cast members that are involved in this, and these are people you're going to want to see perform. They're, they're, they're good people, and they're hardworking people, and more than that, they're talented. And uh, under the direction of Ben, they're going to be um, offering something very unique and very, very fun. Now, where can they get tickets? Um, you can go to HendersonLive.com. Tickets are on sale now there. Uh, tickets are $10 a person, which you really can't beat here. You know, the venue's enormous, and, and they do this $10 series, and it's really a great service to the community. 
So hendersonlive.com, $10. Excellent. And that's going to be at the Pavilion, and what are the dates again? September 21st through the 30th, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 8 p.m. Excellent. So that's Susical the Musical. Head over to hendersonlive.com. Get your tickets. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Curtain Call with Eric Ball. Hang on. I'm getting a little late on my commercial break. There's an empty chair right here. Are you changing your mind now? All right. Oh, these cool, man. You can oh. hear, but you can't see. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's it's fine. weird for me to not have headphones. I've just yeah. Now I realize what all my guests on Love Tap Show are like because they never have headphones, and it's weird for me. Now. Yeah. No, I and I wore my bowler hat today, and I can't put it on, so I'm constantly I'm like fighting with it, and I have a bad hair day, so I didn't want to not wear it. So, <laughs> so I'm like, bad hair day. No, but you're looking dapper. Huh? You look much more metro today than I've ever seen you. Well, it's because I just came from November. <laughs> <laughs> so That's like, I just the whole first part of your interview, I'm like staring at you because like, I can't hair. not look at the hair. I took all, and then I just started feeling yeah. awkward about it. And so I'm like, <laughs> I took all my makeup off when I left this. In the gray. Like, I'll just walk around. It's very, it's my Tony Curtis look. <laughs> <laughs> How's that you going, look by much the way? More That's a great. That's an interesting. Oh, so well. I love that. So, well, so, you look so, so much well more received. metro than everybody loves it. <laughs> and we're, do, we're doing it in the in the oval, I should say. Oh, you are? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's actually a really good idea. I, you know, you never have to sell me on Mammoth, though. Everything he does, I'm just like, brilliant! Yes, but it's the anti-Mammoth, you know that. Like, it's not really his form. It's his, it's, he's breaking his mold a little bit with this show. Mm. A little bit. I don't know it too well, but I know that I've seen clips. Yeah. It's and a, I, It's a great show. It's so pertinent, too. It's so now. I don't know if I've ever seen the Mammoth Almost show. Gone. I know that a lot of them have been done over the last couple of years, but I don't think Well, it's very, very vulgar, though. Is it dark? Yeah, no, but no, didn't you go no, with some dark saw, people? I thought you saw. Did you not go with Jen and Elizabeth and they went to see Glenn in Oliana? <coughs> no, I didn't. Yeah. I was out of town. Well, he was ridiculously good at that. That was a creepy one, though, right? The teacher and the student accusing himself. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he's got the, the he's got the affect for that type of role, though. Yeah. I mean, he's kind of getting. Um, a lot of those types of roles, but he does them so good. He's like, I know. It's, it's, like, it's like he does them good. I like to dislike Glenn on stage. <laughs> right? Uh, I'm always scared that my teeth are Probably um, recap a little bit of what we talked about again. For the sure, yeah, I was sorry, I was talking a lot. No, it's, you're supposed to. Yeah, it's good. Cut my notes. <laughs> do you guys do LB Taps? Yes. The podcast? Well, I, yeah, I, yeah, I do. I, uh, we have to get to a point in case I forget because this keeps blacking out. Since I have both of you in the room after we talk about the shows, I have to address something about the, the show and Taps. Sure. Not in a funny in a good way. But Absolutely. something that was talked about on the forum that I can we can now make happen. Let's do it. But I'm going to challenge everyone. No problem. Okay. Okay, here we go. Uh, <laughs> we can throw it away later. Just leave it. Back. Yeah, sorry. She she was supposed to go to Bill's Fain with or Bill's show tonight with Mandy, and they don't let kids in. She's with me. Thanks for tuning in. This is Eric Ball, and you're listening to Curtain Call. And we are sitting here with Ben Lowy and Andrew Wright from Ragtag Entertainment, and we're talking about Susical the Musical. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And we're, we're wanting everybody oh, to make plans so for... so excited for that part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to know. I'm going to keep it under wrap. Um, September 21st through the 30th. Um, it, it's coming. What's funny is that... I say that as if it's a, a while down the road, but especially now that I'm turning the corner of the next school year here, and we're going to be starting to fill the desks with students and, and finding our own individual routines once again, um, this, these dates are going to be upon us before you know it. So I highly recommend you head over to HendersonLive.com, get your tickets, but get them for the whole family. Get, get a group together. This is a show that is, I don't want to say is like a party, but this isn't like a Tennessee Williams, <laughs> you know, like Drudge Fest. You're, you're going to well, sit there. Well, there is there. a cat on a hot tin roof. 
A oh, dear Gavard. <laughs> Come on, that's any, that one. If Come that's on. any indication. <laughs> okay, but you need to go and see this. It, it's going to be a great, uh, great fun for um, all ages, the whole family. Get a group together and go over to HendersonLive.com and, and check it out. Now, Ben, um, is, is far, t- tell us a little bit about, um, again, you touched on a little bit about your concept with this show because... Um, for those just now tuning in, Seussical the Musical is a musical based on the, uh, it's an adaptation of all Dr. Seuss's books kind of, books kind of uh, wrapped up into one storyline. What, what kind of makes this a story, like one complete story? What, what is the story about? What was your concept? Uh, well, uh, basically what, what the story deals with is that uh, the, uh, the suppression of imagination. And, mm-hmm. I, and I think that's that's actually very um, pertinent now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's just the, you know, it, 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 there's a there's a child. His name is actually Boy at the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. He turns into JoJo later on. But basically, it's about every the outside world, the real world, suppressing his imagination. Don't dream. Don't think. Focus yeah. on your homework. Focus on the real world. You know, get a job. You bum. You know that kind of mm-hmm. thing. And then. He, he finds this this true imaginary friend, this true mm-hmm. true soul of the show, which is the cat, the mm-hmm. cat in the hat. And actually, the way we're doing the show is the cat is the only actual imaginary character in the show. Oh, cool. He is the embodiment of his imagination. And he brings Jojo into this world of Seuss. And the world of Seuss is actually full of, in, my, in our interpretation, is full of real people. Mm. Horton is a real person. Horton is... Um, some mechanic that he sees on the street who mm-hmm. wears this this one piece jumpsuit mechanic mm-hmm. suit, and he just has that lumbering walk. And JoJo <laughs> just thinks that's an elephant. elephant. That's yeah. an elephant. Uh-huh. Um, the Wickersham brothers, group of street dancers, just a bunch of guys, you know, in their in their street clothes, doing, you know, and they're, they're, they're you know they're groovy, whatever, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And, and they've just got that air about them, and he sees them as monkeys, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's how we're going. <laughs> I mean, that that that's the direction that we're taking the show in, and it's just to heighten the imagination. It's just to say, look, this is the world around you. Appreciate it. Love it. And, and it's uh, not. And it doesn't. That's the cool thing about this show is that it it can be interpreted and and delivered in many different ways, you know. Um, oftentimes it's done like that. It's it's done in the way where, well, we have a kangaroo, so let's find a big purple fluffy suit and put a make sure that they have big floppy ears in a pouch, mm-hmm. and make sure that they can bounce around on stage. You know, it's kind of like, you know, let's put these uh, birds in some red tights. Now they're birds. You know, it's like it's like that's kind of how it's done. And I, in in reality, that's kind of how we did it. I, I wanted to pay homage to the to the books, right. and so we tried to stay as true. We we read all the books. We kind of stay as true to the books as possible, so that when we opened this world of Seuss, it was almost like a pop up book. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's often done that way. But but this is I would cha- I would challenge um, people who even seen Seussical or maybe have never seen it before. This is. Um, a uh, very unique way of doing it, and also um, insightful because it kind of challenges the audiences to think like the main character uh-huh. a little bit. And so, so we're talking about a, a, a great uh, storyline and, and fun, and it's goofy and silly, and there's there's moments of sheer hilarity and insanity, mm-hmm. and, 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 and also like poignant that. moments, very soft, sweet moments. The first mm-hmm. time I heard R. Horton, David McFarland sing "Alone mm-hmm. in the Universe," I about cried. Yeah, oh, seriously. That moment, that duet with—that's probably one of my favorite moments. The whole uh, JoJo Horton mm-hmm. "Alone in the Universe," yeah, and Sala Salu. Yeah. Oh, love yeah. that moment. That's oh, yeah. a great moment. But uh, yes, yeah, so you need to go in and check this out. Um, Seussical is running from September 21st through the 30th over at the Henderson Pavilion, which is another. Uh, Great, um, I would say, not often, vi- as much as it's a great venue, not often visited. People don't do stuff and, and go to stuff out there because they think pavilion, they think they have preconceived notions. But it's a great mm-hmm. performance space, um, and uh, especially for a, a show like this. My Absolutely. gosh, are you kidding me? This is going to be a, a, a knockout. So um, head on out there and check it out. Now, let's... let's um, for for a second, let's turn the tables a little bit and talk a little bit about um, Ragtag's other project on the horizon, um, the musical Hair. Yes. And well, I, I have to differentiate. It's not a Ragtag show. Oh, it this, isn't. No, this is uh, it's through Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. Oh. It's just like I I'm using some of Ragtag's resources. Oh, excellent. But it's not a rag. This is their. Well, let's just say Broadway Cares Equity yeah. Fights AIDS is a very a noble, you know, uh, a thing to be doing something for. So that's let's yeah, just. Uh, I'm very excited because, and that's something for audience or listeners to note is this is uh, in New York. It's very common. They do things all year, and a lot of the tours will do mm-hmm. events. And it really hasn't hit Vegas other than Broadway Bears that they do that right. the, the late night burlesque type right. show once a year. Um, they're going to start with a couple events 
a year now where it's sort of these all-star theater events. Um, right. And one that's coming up is going to be that that's in the works is they're working um, developing a chorus line oh, with all dancers from up and down the strip. That's going to be wow. insanely good. So it's something that can be uh, <laughs> sorry. For all of you wondering what the whisper is, my daughter's with me. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> and luckily we weren't on TV. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, it's Ben. ben. <laughs> it's Ben sitting on a lap um, and whispering in his ear. <laughs> um, so, that, yeah, that, look for those. Those are going to be a theater nerd's dream. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm so excited to be a part of this one and to go see the other ones. But it, it's something to look for because Vegas is... It's, it's, it's absent in Vegas because it's so far from New York, but uh, it's going to have a big presence. That's great. And Benefit year. Productions, here's the thing. Um, when, when we say Benefit Production, we're talking about, we're doing it for the sake of bringing more attention and, and, and of course, funds to a particular um, organization or, or cause. And uh, anybody who is anybody who does theater will know um, Broadway Cares is a very um, deserving and, and needing um, organization and and uh, so tell me about hair now. How did hair come uh, to fruition? It's, hair is this um, following the heels of the Broadway uh, resurrection. Well, it was actually um, 